Welcome everyone. Um, we're going to give it a few seconds and then we will crack on, but welcome. Good to see you all. Okay, a few more seconds and then we will start. Welcome to those who just joined. We're just giving a bit more time for anyone else who's able to join us and then we will start. Okay, so I think this is a good point to start. One minute past um, the half the hour. So my name is Shopa Adekola and I am a selection manager at RISE. I lead on the recruitment and the stewardship of the hundreds of individuals from over 90 countries who serve as RISE selectors. So RISE selectors help us in identifying those who end up becoming one of our RISE global winners. And I'll be talking a little bit more about what RISE is as we go along um, through this presentation. But if you have any questions as I am going, um, on, please pop them in the Q&A box and I'll try to answer them as best that, as I can. So please put your questions in the Q&A. So what is RISE? RISE is a global program that's founded by Schmidt Futures and the Roads Trust. The program finds promising young people and provides opportunity for life as they work to serve others. So you can see here on the screen some of the RISE global winners from last year who were surprised live on Good Morning America that they had won the fellowship. So you can imagine how excited and shocked they were on live TV. So at RISE, we believe that brilliance is equally distributed, but opportunity, unfortunately, is not. And we are on a mission to change the odds for the world's most brilliant people from a young age. Our vision is, if one person alone can change the world, imagine what a network of exceptional people can do together throughout their lives. And we want to bring these exceptional people together because we know together, they really can change the world in the most explosive way. So what makes RISE different? Because we know there are loads of fellowships out there, there are scholarships. Why is RISE different? RISE is for life. We find promising young people, as I said earlier, and we do provide opportunities that last their lifetime. So once a RISE global winner, forever a RISE global winner, RISE is also a global community. And I'll talk a little bit about this in the next slide. And finally, we look for brilliance in whatever form it takes. So wherever, wherever it is in the world, from high school, classrooms, to refugee camps, to science fairs, we're looking for brilliance. We don't think brilliance only exists for those who are interested in the sciences. We think brilliance can also be found in those who are interested in the arts, for example. And brilliance just takes different shapes and forms and expressions. So as I was saying, RISE is truly global. Since its inception, RISE has welcomed over 150,000 people from over 170 countries to its community and has selected 200 winners from 69 countries of origin. And so every year we do select 100 winners. Last year, out of the 100 winners, 19 of them were from Africa. So what are the benefits of applying to RISE, um, you might be asking. So everyone who applies, joins this community of leaders and gains access to open opportunities from our partners around the world. And we do have partners that more or less span the breadth of the world, which is something we're really proud of. Finalists also participate in educational and social impact courses offered through RISE to level up their skills and grow their networks. They also gain access to funding for social enterprises, for instance, so seed funding on a competitive basis. Um, our RISE Global winners receive benefits to help them scale their impact. These benefits include a fully funded residential summit, the need-based higher education scholarships, funding for ideas, um, as I mentioned earlier, access to a network of other RISE Global winners, starter tech packages, mentorship, and career services. Um, yeah. So this, well, last year now, and the first ever cohort of RISE Global winners had an all expenses paid learning experience actually in Cape Town, South Africa. And they got to ex 
spend time together and many of them were meeting each other for the first time in person and they engaged in cultural excursions and educational activities and I got the opportunity as well to go to Cape Town for about three weeks and it was really amazing to be around these young people from I think about 40 countries all in one place extremely talented and brilliant just discussing some of the issues that our world is facing today but also some of the issues that are pertinent to South Africa as a context um, it, it really was a memorable time which many of them say was transformative for them. So I just wanted to play this little video where we hear from some of our past winners what they feel the benefits of being RISE Global winners are. RISE offers one of the largest new thing scholarships that are in the world. One year ago, I was applying for colleges and so I was also looking for a scholarship. I got an email from Comana and they told me about Rice and then I chose to apply and it soon became something that was just not was not all about the scholarship but much more. Getting into Rice I really got to know a lot of amazing people, a lot of different cultures and different perspectives but we all connected at one point and I just wanted to disappear from this world. I felt like a global citizen. RISE is not a typical scholarship in where, where one writes up their answers to questions, but instead you are actually recording videos or short videos, which helps the uh, RISE judge you not only on um, how good your project is, but also other skills such as how well you can communicate with others. Just participating in RISE opens to the opportunity to meet so many amazing people from the world. And you get to hear everyone else's perspectives because everyone from different countries and different cultures and different backgrounds, which is really amazing. Yes, so what I will say is for our third cycle, the applications are now closed. So all the information you're hearing now, keep it in mind because our fourth cycle of applications will open usually around the end of the year, so around October. So please note this information and do remember and um, rise if you're between the ages of 15 to 17. Okay, so um, you might be thinking, so how do I apply um, for RISE later this year? Um, so there are five main steps when applying, um, as you can see on the screen, you register on an online platform, you complete a project that has an impact in your community that is solving a problem that is real and relevant, you tell us about yourself, um, and then you review the project of other applicants and they review your project and then you do a couple of quizzes and games right at the end again ignore well, as you can see that the deadline for this year has passed but we will start for the fourth cycle later on this year so once the applications have been received um, reviewed by our selector so i mentioned earlier i work with our selectors five up to 500 finalists advance to our finalist days where they demonstrate their motivations problem solving abilities and teamwork skills in an innovative interview format. So, and then in late 2024, the, th the fourth cohort of RISE Global winners will be announced. So we're at the moment working on selecting and assessing the third cohort of RISE Global winners who will be announced later this year. Um, so when our selectors are reviewing your project and when they, if you make it up to, make up, make it to being a finalist, when they're, observing and listening to you during the finalist days, they're looking through these five traits. So brilliance, perseverance, integrity, empathy, and the calling to serve others. And more information on, uh, on the RISE trait and on RISE itself can be found on the RISE website. So I thought it would be a good idea to share some examples of what our past winners have, have developed. Okay, so we have a few here. We have Tomisi Ogunudi from Nigeria who created a website with a series of quizzes for girls interested in STEM to connect them to opportunities. We have Elieta Boateng from Ghana. She educated the public on recycling and the effects of plastic waste on the environment. And then we have Ikenna also from Nigeria who developed a website to educate Nigerian teens on the importance of cybersecurity. We have a few more. We have Esther from Guatemala, who developed a program to help young women learn about opportunities available to them and to discover their voices. 
We have Anna from Brazil, who co-created a group to help students find scholarships and other education opportunities, I guess, such as RISE. And then we have Antonio from Mexico, who developed a math and science club to help young students learn these subjects in innovative ways. And I'll just pick from here. We have Tun from Myanmar. He designed an affordable and sustainable housing for informal riverside settlers in Myanmar. And then we have Razon from Indonesia. He constructed a hydrogen fuel model car to examine the efficiency of hydrogen as a power source. We have Oliver from Austria. He created a browser extension to make the internet more accessible to people with impairments. Um, yeah, so that's just a few. And then we have um, an opportunity here from um, another winner, Madalena, I believe, on what a RISE project could look like. She will be talking about what her RISE project was, and she was a winner from 2021. Hi guys, my name is Madalena. I'm from Lisbon, Portugal. My RISE project was based on SDG number five, which is gender equality, and it's called Equal XXY. It's an app that helps couples balance the unequal, unpaid domestic workload, which is a burden, which usually falls on women. And it does this by splitting these tasks equally between both members based on the time it takes for them to be consistent. With this, the woman or whoever it is that has the most tasks, um, hopefully it frees up their time for some leisure activities. Yep, so that was another example of what a RISE project would look like. But I think the important point to stress, because we get this question a lot is, um, does my project have to be something in the sciences? It really can be anything. Um, as long as you can find a problem in your community or a problem that you notice across the world and figure out through research and perhaps some focus groups, speak to people, a solution to that, that could be a RISE project. And you do get about three months and um, once the cycle opens to work on this on this project um, as well. So there, there is some time to do it and do it well. I will encourage you if you apply for RISE later on this year to apply early, start early to give yourself enough time to make sure you are delivering a project that is top notch. Okay, so I wanted to share where some of our RISE winners are today in terms of education. So we have global winners enrolled in top universities across the world, as you can see here from Imperial College London, to University of Oxford, UC Chicago, um, Tech de Monterey in Mexico, Minerva University, MIT, and Stanford University. So we are really proud of the, the things and the places that we see our RISE winners um, accomplishing and where they're, they're going to. So thank you so much for listening to this presentation. As I said earlier, I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you might have um, for, for me about the RISE program. So if there are any questions, kindly put them in the chat. Thank you. Um, this is a very nice picture, which actually was taken during the residential summit I was talking about last year in Cape Town, South Africa. So I'll just stop sharing my screen and I'm open for, for any questions. questions, comments, anything, you can pop it in the Q&A. Looking to see if anything has come through. Okay. It looks like there aren't any questions and my presentation was super clear. Um, as I said earlier, we there's a website, riseforthworld.org, if you have um, want to find out more information about the program. And as I said earlier, if you can put a reminder in your calendar now for the 1st of October to remember to keep checking the website for when applications open for the fourth cycle. So if you're between the ages of 15 and 17, I would highly encourage you to apply for RISE um, and use it as an opportunity to begin to make impact or continue if you already are to make impact in your community. Oh, okay, let's see. Please go ahead, someone has said they have a question. 
Yes, yeah, so to get, someone has asked, would we have to become RISE participants to get scholarships? To get scholarships, you would have to become one of the up to 100 RISE Global winners. So it's the only the RISE Global winners who get access to post-secondary school educational funds. So I hope that answers your question. And Olua Fikuyomi, I think you, you have a question. If you can type it in the chat, in the Q&A, and I'll try to answer it as well. Any other questions, please put them in the chat. Um, okay, so I can see your question. So um, Olua Fikuyomi, if you become a RISE Global winner. So you apply for RISE, you do a project and you become a RISE Global winner next year. Um, if your interest is in going to a university or an institution in the USA, you can apply for it. And if you do get apply for the university, once you become a winner, and if you do get a place, RISE is able to fund your education. Um, I will mention that the scholarships are needs based. So it is based on us assessing that you actually need financial support to go to the university. So I think, yeah, hopefully that answers your question. Um, progress, so progress is asking, are the scholarships 100%? It could be all based on need. So if it's assessed that you financially need 100% scholarship, yes, it will be. If it's assessed that you need less than that, then it will be less than 100%. I, I think I've even answered the question. Okay. Uh, is the project part um, of the scholarship? So the project precedes the scholarship. So the project is part of the application to get the RISE fellowship. So you develop a project as part of your application to hopefully become a RISE Global winner. Um, and I must say that, because I know a lot of people are asking about the scholarship, so the scholarship is just actually one of the benefits of becoming a RISE Global Winner, but obviously for 15 to 17 year olds, it's one of the biggest benefits. So the project you do beforehand, and if your project meets our criteria, and you go through our finalist day, which is our assessment day successfully, and are chosen to become a RISE Global Winner, you have access to the scholarship. So actually, the good thing about having this discussion now is you have time to begin to think of what you would want to do as a RISE project before October comes around um, so that you make it good. Um, also, there's another question. Is there an age limit for an applicant? Is it for, for college seekers mm -hmm. or for those who want to do MSc? Mm -hmm. Thank you. So it's for 15 to 17 year olds. So I'm guessing um, for 15 to 17 year olds, they are probably seeking to progress onto college. So yes, there is an age limit and it's 17 years old. Okay. Any more questions? We still have a little bit of time. So feel free to, to put, put it in the Q&A box. If any more questions come to mind. Stop sharing my screen. Progress actually had a question, and uh, she was like, "What if you're a little over seventeen and you're seeking to progress to college?" Uh, so unfortunately, and the dates change. You actually have to be seventeen by a certain date in the year um, you're applying. So, for instance, if you start your application in October this year, I think usually the deadline by which you must, you cannot be older than 17 is in June. So if by June you're already 18, for instance, you you can't apply for RISE. So it's quite strict with the age limit. Okay, so she said she's a little over 17 uh, and she'll be 18 by uh, September. Yes, yes. So unfortunately, you have crossed the, the thresholds to, to apply for, for RISE um, progress. I'm sorry, but I hope you're able to find, you know, through this fair, other opportunities that suit your suit you and your age. Because you're still young, and there are many opportunities for you out there. It just isn't right this time around. Thank you guys for the question. Your um, progress. I will type an email in response to your question. You can just send us an email. Mm -hmm. and we'll look through our other scholarship opportunities and share details with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and same for Habibat as well. Okay. No problem. 
Um, and um, Timmy, you have the link to the RISE website. I guess you can also share that with, with the attendees afterwards. So I don't know how yeah. to share. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll share our whole newsletter with um, okay. all the attendees. Fantastic, thank you. Okay, it looks like there are no more questions. Yeah, looks like nothing new is coming up. And what would you suggest, Timmy? Do we hold off for more questions or do we give people back their time and end early? <laughs> so we have about nine minutes more and yes. uh, I think we should just hold on to Fantastic. 5.55 and then, oh, sorry, 10.55 and then we can end the session. Yes. Thank you so much, Shakwe, for joining no the session. I'm so happy you were able to give this um, short info session. Um, I'm grateful. No, no worries. I I really enjoy talking about Rise because I think it's a fantastic, a fantastic opportunity um, for for young people. I wish I had an opportunity like Rise when I was 15 to 17 years old. Um, Many of us say that. And as I said, I work with selectors. So selectors are obviously adults over 21. And many of them, um, I was doing a training for them yesterday, and they would often say they wish they had this opportunity when they were 15 to 17. So, you know, I've also spoken to, I, I think it's worth mentioning, a couple of young people I've spoken to in the past when I talk about RISE, they've been intimidated, interestingly, by the program. So they see the projects that other RISE winners have done and they're like, I don't think I can do it. I don't think I'm smart enough. I don't think I'm brilliant enough. I don't think I, I cannot build a hydrogen powered vehicle like one of the winners did. And again, I will encourage anyone watching this recording or who is currently on this webinar, do not feel intimidated. You do not have to build a a skyscraper or build, um, be an astronaut already at 15 to become a Rise Global winner. So I would encourage you to find a problem that is worth, that needs to be solved, that is relevant, whatever that problem is, and build a project around it. Um, don't feel, and what's the worst that could happen? You know, really, what's the worst that could happen? You, you don't make it to become a global winner and, and, and that is fine, but it's still an experience. So don't write yourself off try it's important to always try with these things thank you it's actually very important to explore mm -hmm. with that you can build your portfolio you exactly. can um, add that to your cv yes and yes. I, I know a lot of people don't know that um, you get your portfolio as early as 15 years mm -hmm. That piling up all your experiences, all mm -hmm. the things you've um, taken mm -hmm. part in, mm -hmm. even uh, something as simple as uh, going to the orphanage, you can add to your portfolio. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think it's something very difficult that Nigerians don't, uh, Nigerian students don't um, mm. pay attention to. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, when we talk more about rice and mm -hmm. uh, some other um, scholarship opportunities, we can explore. Nigerians to this. Mm. Also, um, this is um, this is a uh, Fikwayomi. She's asking a question. She said she was told she can get admission to study abroad, but she's over eighteen, so she can't register for um rice program. Um, is there something you could tell her, like uh, maybe a little bit of advice? Mm. Or some of the um, organizations you're familiar with, if you could just um, uh, send pointers to her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so as I was saying earlier, and I know that you're part of this fair, and as Timmy was saying, there will be other opportunities to hear about other organizations. But I would say at 17, um, to keep looking, I'm sure you I'm hoping you've already been doing some research, and I would say you do your research and do it quick because I'm guessing at 17, you've already finished secondary school. So you're, you're done um, you're done by now. I can't think of any organization off the top of my head, but again, if I do, I will share them with Timmy so she can add them to the newsletter because I'm scanning my head for, for our partners. And I will look through that after this webinar and share some with, with Timmy. But I will say that, you know, to continue doing your research and as very important point that Timmy 
made is when you're applying to these universities, they want to see the things that you're doing outside of school. So make sure you already have a portfolio of activities. If you don't have a portfolio, that will make you shine because they have thousands of people from across the world who are seeking scholarships. You want to make yourself stand out. So if, as of today, you don't have experience, perhaps volunteering and thing, or experience with a little, you know, part-time job for one month, whatever it is, or 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 you're not able to clearly articulate the things you do outside of school, like your interests outside of school, you want to start working on that now and begin to gather evidence of, to show your brilliance, to show that you're brilliant and that you are actively participating in the life of your community. So as you're researching for opportunities, also make sure, you know, we call it CV in the job world, but even for those like yourself applying for, for university scholarships, you need evidence to show, to show why they should choose you over the other other people from all over the world who also are seeking scholarships. But, but yeah, don't give up in your search um, and keep upskilling. Um, upskilling is for life. Even as adults, we keep upskilling and, and you should as well and make sure you're able to articulate, articulate those skills you're gaining. All right, thank you very much. Uh, it was very lovely having you over. It's yes. been a while and uh, hopefully we can see you in June at our physical fair. Because oh. uh, we'd like to see you guys at uh, our physical fair. Yeah. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. So we have to end the session right now. Mm -hmm. uh, so we can go back to the platform and have uh, discussions with the um, Boot representatives for universities and schools. And uh, we have University of uh, Calgary, we have uh, University of Guelph, we have um, Seneca College, and we have um, representatives of over 15 universities present on the platform. And we also have um, boarding schools like Cast Global Schools, we have uh, Ipswich, and we have London International Academy in uh, Canada. We all we also have uh, we have Box Hill School, and we'll be happy if you could just um, converse with these uh, booth representatives. They also have individual scholarships, and hopefully you'll be able to get um, something that fits your needs. Thank you very much. I have a lovely day, everybody. Thank you, Shokwe, for coming around. Thank you. Bye. Sure the best. Happy to see you. Bye. 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 So we can end this session now.